The Internet of Things is changing much about the world we live in. From the way we drive, to how we make purchases, and even how we get energy for our homes. Sophisticated sensors and chips are embedded in the physical things that surround us, each transmitting valuable data. Data that lets us better understand how these things work and work together. But how exactly do all these devices share such large quantities of data? And how do we put that information to work? Whether we're improving the production of a factory, giving city residents real-time updates on where to park, or monitoring our personal health, it's the common Internet of Things platform that brings this diverse information together and provides the common language for the devices and apps to communicate with each other. The process starts with the devices themselves, which securely communicate with an Internet of Things platform. This platform integrates the data from many devices and applies analytics to share the most valuable data with applications that address industry-specific needs. Let's start with a simple example, a car. After taking a long road trip, Rebecca notices that her check engine light has come on. She knows that she needs to have her car looked at by a mechanic, but is not sure whether it's something minor or something that needs immediate attention. As it turns out, the sensor that triggered Rebecca's check engine light monitors the pressure in her brake line. This sensor is one of many monitoring processes throughout the car, which are constantly communicating with each other. A component in the car called the diagnostic bus gathers the data from all these sensors, then passes it to a gateway in the car. The gateway integrates and sorts the data from the sensors. This way, only the most relevant diagnostic information will be transmitted to the manufacturer's platform. But before sending this organized data, the car's gateway and platform must first register with each other and confirm a secure communication. The platform is constantly gathering and storing thousands of bits of information from Rebecca's car and hundreds of thousands of cars like hers, building an historical record in a secure database. The manufacturer has added rules and logic to the platform. So when Rebecca's car sends a signal that her brake fluid has dropped below a recommended level, the platform triggers an alert in her car. The manufacturer also uses the platform to create and manage applications that solve specific issues. In this case, the manufacturer can deploy an application on the platform called the Asset Management System. This application oversees all of their customers' cars on the road, as well as all the parts in their warehouses. It uses the data from Rebecca's car to offer her a potential appointment time to service her car, directions to the nearest certified dealer, and a coupon for the service. What's more, the app will ensure that Rebecca's brakes are covered under her warranty, that the correct replacement part is ordered, and then sent to the dealership so it is ready when she arrives. But the manufacturer's analysis does not stop there. They have also deployed a continuous engineering application that tracks not only Rebecca's car, but hundreds of thousands of others, looking for ways to improve the design and manufacturing process of the car itself. If the same problem in her brake line crops up in a critical number of other cars, the manufacturer uses applications custom-built for the automobile industry to pinpoint the exact problem. They can see if these cars were made at the same factory, used the same parts, or came off the assembly line on the same day. So what do all these pieces add up to? Streamlined inventory management for the dealer, a better, safer car from the manufacturer. And for Rebecca, it means she can be back on the road faster and get to where she's going safely. All thanks to the Internet of Things. Making stores smart. Bluetooth beacon technology has been getting a lot of buzz lately, but the area that is at the center of the heat map is their usage in retail stores. The idea is fairly simple. A small device that runs on batteries would be installed on a wall, a countertop, or a ceiling of a retail store, and it could be many of them installed there. They would in turn send out very short data strings to all the Bluetooth receivers around them, typically your smartphone. And all of this happens on a new technology called Bluetooth Low Energy or Bluetooth Smart. It's different than the Bluetooth you use right now, primarily because it uses very little energy and it doesn't require all that tedious pairing and connection. Now the short little messages that the Bluetooth beacon sends out that your phone picks up instruct your phone to go to the web and pull down content that's related to where you are or what you're doing. It can be very focused on the immediate area where you're standing or it could be widened out to relate to the entire store. There's store proximity. Beacons could reach out to your phone on the sidewalk, let's say, to urge you to come into a store based on its products, special offers, or your past patronage. Then there's the check-in stage. A beacon just inside the door could trigger a reward for you coming into the store, tailored based on your customer history, and it could also tee up a pre-approved digital payment method for whatever you may buy. Then there's product information. As you stroll the store, the products in it would describe themselves on your phone screen simply by you approaching them. 
That information can be powerfully personalized because remember, the content's being served up by robust existing web servers, not that limited little beacon. And finally, check out. No more having to look for a cashier or even an employee with a phone or tablet to check you out. You just leave the building. Remember, you already set up your payment back on beacon stage number two, so you're already approved. Nielsen research suggests the smartphone has set the table for the beacon. 70% of smartphone shoppers use a store locator. 63% use their phone to check prices and product data in the store. 37% keep their shopping list on their smartphone. 34% pull up mobile coupons at checkout. And 23% have used mobile payment on their phone in some form or another. Now, of course, before this gets any real traction, we've got to get through a few hurdles. Apps. What app do you need installed for the beacon to work on your phone? Worst case would be an app for every store. Better case would be for every chain of stores. Ideal would be that the technology is built in at the operating system. Smart beacons present relevant information to your device based on the context of where you are. Now in Android and iOS 7, your device scans for any nearby beacons in the background as you move around. And when you want info about something you're near, it's ready to swipe on your notification screen. So if you take out your phone as you pass a new restaurant, you can see their lunch specials or menu reviews. Since your phone knows that you just arrived at the table with the red beacon, the menu will be ready when you pick up your phone. So if you're in a hurry, you can send your order straight to the kitchen. You can have beacons at home too. So if your context is the kitchen and you're near the fridge, your shopping list will be ready and waiting when you look at your phone. And then when you walk by the beacon in the dairy aisle, your phone can give you a reminder to make sure you don't forget to pick up milk. And because the range awareness for beacons is sensitive down to a few inches, it can tell what you're closest to or what product you pick up. So when you look at your phone, it'll already show product information or let you know if your size is in stock or let you see what other colors are available. And then you can order it right from your phone. And if you've been at the restaurant for a while, your phone will be ready if you want to order another drink or pay the check with the push of a button. Your phone is always with you. Smart beacons, give it some contact. Powerful and beautifully designed. 15 sensors in one little device. An amazing platform to build endless IoT applications. Powered with 15 sensors capable of processing audio, detecting human emotions, and responding to environmental stimuli, the Matrix is breaking new ground on the convergence of the physical and online. And getting everything to work simultaneously and flawlessly. It is the perfect marriage of form and function. One unifying platform powered by global creators. What we wanted to do was create a platform that allowed one powerful little device with 15 sensors, which gives 32,000 possible sensor combinations and allow developers around the globe to create hundreds of thousands of applications. For users, it's the simplicity of one device able to do hundreds of things at the same time. For developers, it's the ability to create and share. Your matrix in your home can become the monitoring device. It can become the computer vision uh, device that recognizes you when you get home. Welcome back. Would you like me to set the air to your preferred temperature and play your favorite playlist? Yes. Knows it's you, pushes a message to your stereo and plays your favorite movie. It allows the matrix to understand the world around it. Just by any app you download, it changes the functionality completely of the matrix. You can put it in a package facility. It will uh, identify objects in a assembly line. It's, it's basically doing the job of what a human could do, but it's doing billions of calculations a second. Print, it's a really striking object. Even sitting on a table, mounted against a wall, it has a lot of presence. One beautiful device, endless possibilities.